Hello and welcome to another tutorial for Kenshi. My name is Tobel, and in this video I'm going to be talking about different ways to start out the game and make some money. Now, there are a lot of different starts in Kenshi, and we covered this in my first tutorial video and all these different types of starts. This video here that I'm doing right now is going to mostly assume you're trying to do one of the challenging kind of solo starts. I'm not going to address the nobodies or freedom seekers just yet, although you can apply some of the things I'm going to talk about with the nobody start. In fact, you just basically apply it to all of the characters instead of just one. But in terms of the trader, I think there's one that lets you uh, start out as a wandering trader, or the freedom seekers, it might not be as applicable right out of the gates, although there are, you know, these types of things, these activities you can do are always available to any character whatsoever. So I've chosen a holy nation start so I want to start off as a holy nation so I basically don't start with much of anything 200 cats I have the holy flame which is the uh, theological book for the uh, lord of okron which is what the holy nation believes in and I've got a iron club and some decent pants and shirt so a couple of things here and it looks like we've triggered this guard he wants to talk to us so we'll let him talk to us real quick you want to search us? No problem. We literally have nothing at all in our inventory but your holy book. So there's a couple things you can do at the start of the game. And there's um, it really depends on what you're into. One of the more grindy options, and by grindy I mean it just takes a little bit of time, but it can be useful in a couple different ways. One option is to find an iron resource or a copper resource just outside of a friendly city. So we spawned here. And I'm going to pull up the map and see that this is in bad teeth. And I will try to keep the map spoilers to a minimum, but this is a fairly pop, uh, popular city. You're going to run across this city because it's in Holy Nation territory, so it's not too big of a surprise. So I'm going to run over here to this iron resource and start having my character attack. No, he's going to start mining this resource. This is the bar that tells you how close to uh, bringing up one piece of ore your character is or how close he is to finishing one piece of uh, that item so I'm going to speed up the game by pressing F4 I like to do this very close to a friendly city for a couple reasons generally the friendly patrols come out of the city and are nearby so they keep the bandits away from you or if you do happen to get ambushed by a pack of wolves or something like that you should be able to run to the city for protection which is very important at the start of the game you're not going to be able to fight pretty much anything at the start of Kenshi. I mean, that's just that's just the way it is. Now, you can try to fight, of course. You might get knocked on your butt. Uh, and you might get lucky because, you know, another friendly group might uh, patch you up and, you know, make sure that you're okay. Uh, but for the most part, unless you happen to catch a starving vagrant all by them, their lonesome, you're not going to be able to survive a one-on-one -on -one fight unless you happen to have a unique start where you're a little bit stronger and you're a little bit more powerful with a better weapon. So I like to use this method when I do a much longer let's play, when I'm doing a playthrough where I want to have a big group of people. So normally I don't do this part until I have at least 9 or 10 other people with me. However, this isn't bad on its own to make a little bit of money. So as you can see, one piece of raw iron is worth 90 cats. Sorry, it's actually worth uh, 78 cats sold. The average price is 90 so its value is actually 78 at this city over here. But what we can do is, is keep having our character mine this iron resource. Keep in mind, uh, of course I happen to just pull a group of hungry bandits. This is a huge pack of bandits. Okay, well this is a great example of the other thing that I like to do in the game, which is scavenging. So I'm going to snag my two pieces of iron that I just grabbed. And I'm going to try to run away. Except I'm not really fast enough. Aw, so sad. I'm going to pause this real quick, and I'm going to dump my pieces of iron. Great, now I'm a little bit faster than this group. So here's the other option that I like to do in Kenshi. Now, picture this, right? This game is set in this post-apocalyptic wasteland area. And almost every apocalyptic movie you've ever seen has some kind of scavenger, right? So... Yeah, you're a scavenger. Go scavenge things. And one of the best ways to do that is wait for some enemy group to trigger a fight with a protective large group like our good friends, the Holy Paladins. Hey, just sit back, watch the carnage unfold, 
and you can kind of dive in and find some goods in their possession. Now, this isn't the best example because these are just hungry bandits, and for the most part, all they have are a bunch of uh, clubs. But you can find groups like the... I'm trying to think of the name. Dust Bandits, I believe, is one of the groups. There's also some other groups that patrol. It depends on where you're at. Different bandit groups patrol different areas. So you might encounter groups with some crappy swords, but those swords might be worth two or 300 cats apiece. So as you start to watch those bodies drop, you can start to build up a good amount of loot by just waiting for them to go unconscious because you're basically your, your friends here, your paladins are taking on the fight, and you can kind of clean up the rest. Now, when you're in the city like this, it's not a bad idea to maybe turn your block on because it gives you a massive amount of blocking skill and just take, take a little bit of damage. Maybe one of these guys chases you all the way through the gates. Go ahead and let them be aggressive towards you because you might be able to build up a couple of attack or defense points depending on if you uh, let them attack you or if you want to attack back. For the most part, though, our friends here are going to just mop the floor with these... Uh, starving bandits because they're at about you know seven or eight attack well our paladins are at like 46 to 50 and their strength is way way higher and of course they're better equipped so scavenging is a huge part of kenshi this just happened to take place inside of a friendly city but you can find scenes like this all across the land you might find a group of bandits fighting a pack of wolves you might find a patrol of holy paladins who are eliminating a nest of cannibals and so, you know, there's going to be different areas where there's combat, and you have the op you, basically you have to think like a scavenger. You're basically a person who's got barely any money. You don't have any food to your name right now, so you have to do what you need to to survive. So while everyone's distracted with fighting, I can click on one of these unconscious or dead people and steal some of their items. Now, it's not really a crime if I'm stealing from the people who are aggressing against your allied city. However, if one of these guys happens to go down, so maybe if the paladin here happens to get knocked unconscious, if I try to loot the paladin, it will be considered thievery if I pick anything off of him. Now, I can look at his body. I can see what he's got. Like, I can do this. I can open the inventory. But as soon as I try to take something, the, that paladin and anyone who sees me will wind up aggroing me unless that char character is unconscious and you're kind of in a corner where it's nice and dark. And that might be something you have to turn your sneaking, uh, your sneaking uh, ability on for. So let's go back to this guy who's unconscious. We're going to pick up his stick. We're going to click on a couple of these bodies. The nice thing Kenshi does is when you're pretty close to a pile of bodies, it lets you click over to a new body without you know, losing the box. So again, you're looking at the price of these. Yeah, they're only worth 45 cats, but you didn't do anything to get all these sticks, right? You've, you've barely done any work. You didn't even have to take a shot. All you did was get ambushed by these guys and, and intelligently you walked inside of a protective city. So think like a scavenger. Try to grab whatever you can anytime you see a fight. Just be cautious that you don't put yourself in a position where you're stealing from the big strong, you know, uh, the big strong faction here. Wow, this is quite a battle. This is one of the biggest battles I think I've seen in a long time. I mean, it's just starving bandits, so it's nothing to, you know, be impressed with. I like our characters just stoically looking out over the battle. <laughs> so, that's one of the options. Um, if you see situations like this, this character here is crippled because they've lost the ability to use their leg. Well, they're still an enemy. Why not get a free couple free skill points and knock them on the back of the head? Right there. Your character can take advantage of those situations. Uh, they can also jump in on any fights that are in place, so you can kind of gang up on somebody and help out your local allies by knocking them on the head. It won't necessarily get you a ton of combat points, but it might be useful and just quite entertaining to watch your character swing away at somebody crawling around. Uh, let's give an example of helping out. So here's this guy who's fighting a bunch of people. Oh, he just got knocked. But you could come right in here, and he got knocked out right as I showed up. But you could come join in this fight and, and sort of uh, help out any locals in the area. Ganging up on enemies is a great way to build up your skills while staying fairly safe. Oh, look. This might be the... Yep, this is the Hungry Bandit leader. This is the leader of that entire pack. They happen to have a sword on them. So let's loot their body and find out that they've got a pair of wooden sandals and a horse chopper, which is actually worth... 124 cats. 
So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do, don't tell anyone I did this, but I'm going to ditch the Holy Flame. I'm going to pick up the Horse Chopper. It'll be in my main weapon slot, but that's okay. And I'll pick up the two uh, clubs that I moved over to them. Just don't tell anyone about the Holy Flame. They get a little upset when you don't carry around their magic book. But yeah, that's scavenging in a nutshell. And again, like I mentioned, you can find this happening all over the land of Kenshi. So if you wind up wanting to not really spend much time doing something repetitive, like uh, you know mining a piece of iron, and then I would encourage you to just start exploring. However, I will warn you that a lot of these areas can be incredibly deadly. And if your character has not built up their athletics, which means that they're not faster than most of the enemies in the game, you can get uh, overrun and you can wind up getting knocked unconscious. So be careful about, number one, where you're going in the world, but also where you're saving your game at. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing an early quick save. Just press F5 and your game will do a quick save. I don't think there's anything wrong with using that save and leaning on that save if you happen to take a wrong turn and you're suddenly ambushed. If you're starting the game for the first couple times, you know, don't feel bad about doing that. You're going to have weird and horrible deaths all the time, and it, there's nothing wrong with, you know, reloading your game and making use of that. All right, so we're going to go into any of these stores and click on the, the vendor. And I can see here that this guy's got about 6,000 cats. So this is more than enough money to pay for all of these uh, clubs. You can see that the upper portion of this screen says iron club fencing chance 100 stolen from so he knows this is stolen from someone he he basically knows that it's been stolen from a bandit leader but he doesn't care so the fencing chance fencing means you're selling something illegally basically to someone so he's going to give us the value of those clubs i'm also going to sell the club i started with because well i don't think i'm going to fight too many people maybe we'll keep it for sentimentality right all right let's keep a hold on that and then we're going to sell this horse chopper so we started out, I think, with like 200 cats, and now we're up to 800 cats. Nothing to write home about. You know, you're not making tons of money off this, but everything can build off all of your decisions, right? So now we have 800 cats. Well, maybe what we do, maybe we don't want to scavenge. Maybe we don't want to sit there and mine all day. Maybe you're more interested in doing something honest, like becoming a trader. Well, let's take a look at those goods we've just... Uh, or the, let's take a look at the goods trader. And with the money that we just got from kind of scavenging those bodies, what do we can look at is prices here. So we're looking at all these trade goods. If you notice there on the right side, you can see that the average price, and then you get a price markup. The fact that it's 91 means this item is under the current average price. So if the average price is 2527 this the value of this item is 2300 so in theory, if we were to take this somewhere else, we might make upwards of 200 cat profit. Unfortunately, it's more money than we have in our inventory, as are, I think, most of these items. So trading is possible. It's definitely possible to be a, just a normal trader in the game. You just sometimes need a little bit more of, a, of capital, basically, to set yourself up to buy your first batch of items. So, But don't think that trading is impossible. It definitely is, but in terms of the time it takes to go between cities it's going to be a bit more lucrative for you to continue just mining or scavenging or exploring rather than uh, you know trying to do a trade with a very low cost item one other thing to keep an eye out is when you're out and about in the Kenshi world look for this kind of situation we've got a bunch of white numbers here this means that somebody's fighting somebody and because there's so many numbers here it looks like it's a pretty big battle so if I zoom in here it looks like our allies it's an allied patrol i say allied the holy nation isn't necessarily our allies they're just neutral and we're not you know at war with them so i consider them allies to me uh, because they're going to help us out in, in times of you know when we're getting attacked so they're fighting off a big pack of river raptors they've killed the river raptors so we can take a look at the body and find out that they've actually got animal skins and as it turns out, animal skins are worth more than even the clubs that we found earlier, and even that iron chopper. So I'm going to pick up some of the leather from these animals. Again, this might seem tedious to you, but I mean, it is, think of it like an RPG, right? When you're out and about in an MMO or an RPG, you kill an animal, you loot the animal, right? So it's the same general idea, you're just doing it from a high perspective. Where else do we see 
our friends, uh, the river raptors. Oh, there's a bunch of corpses up here. Okay. We'll get as much as we can take in one inventory go. Looks like we've got room for one more piece of leather. Perfect. Uh, this foul meat is not worth anything, though, so we're not going to pick this up. So, let's take our recent... And it's not ill-gotten gains, perhaps. It's just, hey, we're doing them a favor, right? We're cleaning up this mess that happened uh, when they, you know, ambushed an, a pack of enemies. We're doing them a favor. We're cleaning up the street, right? Um, we're giving their we're giving their their vendors and we're giving their their leather workers some resources to mess with. So let's go over here to this uh, vendor again. This was the I think this is just the trades good vendor or maybe the building supply vendor. It'll tell you when you click on them. Holy construction trader. That's a holy construction trader, not just a construction trader. Either way, he's going to pay, uh, I think he pays you roughly the same that any other vendor in that same city would pay you. So he's going to pay us about two thirty nine for these, uh, these leathers. So I'm going to go ahead and sell all these leathers. Again, making sure that he's got enough money to cover the transaction, which he does. But now we find ourselves with 3,000 cats. So... Within just a few minutes, we've already gone from basically having 200 cats in our inventory to all the way up to about 300. So that's fine with me. Let's find... There's a weapons dealer here. And when I'm, I'm hitting tab because it helps me... It snaps the name of the building or the, the sign on the building, so it helps me find the sign on the building. Okay, I don't see an adventurer trader here. Uh, adventure traders sell things like backpacks, and they actually have a, a symbol of a guy with a stick with a backpack. Uh, they can sell you backpacks that, what the backpacks do is let you stack items. So some items, uh, you only can have so many in your inventory. Some backpacks basically just expand your inventory space and let you have more of those items. But there are special backpacks, I think they're called trader backpacks, they let you actually stack items of the same type. So if you had two pieces of leather, you could stack them on top of each other and you wind up with, you know, stacks of nine or something like that, whatever the limit is. So that might be an option later on. If you are really into scavenging and you really want to carry as much as possible, that might be an option. The other thing I was going to finish talking about here with this copper resource, as you're mining, I don't know if it's as you're mining or later, I think it is as you're mining, you begin to get your strength up. And I don't think we had this happen yet because we were kind of interrupted by that group of uh, wandering hungry bandits first. It's either if as you're mining or it's going to be after you're mining you have to carry these things around, uh, you can get your skills up with these as well. What I like to do is combine this mining operation with some training. So what I'll sit here and do is I'll have my character, and again, I mentioned that I normally do this after I have about 9 or 10 squad mates. I'll have them all do this as well, but when I first start the game, sometimes I use this as my method of go-to. So I'll have him sit here and mine away. Actually, I think the copper node takes a bit longer. Let's go back to our iron node over here. And in fact, we ran away from here, so I pressed Alt, and it highlights the two pieces of raw iron that I dropped a while ago. So I can pick these two things up. And I'll head back over here to the iron. And it actually kept our progress. This is like how much, how close we were to unearthing the next piece of raw iron. So we're going to speed things up here a bit, and what I would like to do is show you what I do with iron once I have a decent sized stack. Uh, I use this as kind of like fitness training. So whenever your character is over encumbered, and that means that the encumbrance is red, as they run around, they'll increase their strength by simply just being overwhelmed or over encumbered. So as you start to put more weight on your character character if you expand this box you'll notice that while the athletics xp goes down the strength xp goes up so let's take a look again at this rock i want to carry both of these two items so now you notice that my total weight is now over to heavy and if you see here my encumbrance is up to 64 percent and my strength xp is up to 20. that means i get a bonus 20 percent to any strength gains so what i just like to do is is completely overwhelm my character with raw materials. I mean, I make it so heavy that they shouldn't, in theory, be able to move at all. Then I have my character run around, and I kind of hope that I don't get ambushed by anyone as I'm waddling around. 
I have my character run back to the city, a safe city, and I kind of run them around in circles inside, outside of the city, and maybe outside of the gates. It is a bit tedious. I definitely grant you that. So if you're not a person who enjoys this type of leveling, then definitely don't do it. But think about it. If you're a guy who's trying to get, or a gal who's trying to get stronger and to become a better fighter, you're going to do some tough work. That includes running around with a bunch of rocks in your backpack or in your pockets. It's making you stronger. So it takes a while to do. Um, I tend to do this with a big group of 10 because I let them, uh, like I'll scavenge. Normally what I do when I start the game is I scavenge until I have enough money to get about 9 or 10 recruits. Then I put them through the equivalent of basic training. So I might, you know, look at some other things on Kenshi. I might watch a, a show or something like that and just send my characters back and forth along a road. I might even send them like from here all the way up the road just have to be careful that they don't get ambushed because they're so slow and they're over encumbered so their skills will be uh i don't know if over encumbrance i think it negatively affects your skills but maybe it doesn't maybe it doesn't at all but as you saw here we actually just got a skill up point in strength so because he's over encumbered he's learning how to be stronger he's uh, his body is adapting and he's becoming stronger over time so that's one thing you could do while you're also making money at the start of the game is train your abilities up at the same time and then of course once you're done bring all those goods all those raw pieces of iron that you've uh, so diligently mined out of the piece of iron resource and we'll take them again to any trader apparently no one cares what they buy the bartender is just happy to buy your pieces of raw iron and they'll give you about 82 it looks like 82 cats per piece so Again, pretty safe, uh, legitimate way to make money at the start of the game. So this was just a couple ideas for you to get going in the game. There's a whole different bunch of paths you can go down. Uh, you can try to become a bounty hunter. You can just start exploring the map. And really, that's part of it. I think exploring the map and staying flexible is really one of the most important things you can do in Kenshi. So just take advantage of situations as they come up because... You're in a post-apocalyptic world. You're basically the equivalent of a scavenger at the start of the game. So, you know, I see some fighting over here. Hey, what's going on? Well, it looks like, uh, who got in a fight? They're, they killed a bunch of bone dogs. Who's this? Oh, this is another hungry bandit. He's actually playing dead, which is kind of funny. We'll cover that at some point. Oh, this guy wanted to talk to us. He's basically saying, um, so he's basically saying, just welcome. We're, he's greeting you and welcoming you to the Holy Land's territory. So I know that the nice response is love and devotion. That's their that's their phrase. So he's going to give us a ration pack just because he's a nice paladin and we're a male. They actually don't like women all that much. So, yeah, the Holy Nation is a bit sexist. Just keep that in mind. If you're bringing a lot of female characters, they will get a little sassy with you. Oh, here's a great example of... There is an ho a Holy Nation character here who's been downed. They're unconscious. If you see how the icon is red... That means that I can look at this character, but as soon as I try to steal anything, I'm going to immediately get uh, aggressed upon by the entire party because I'm, I'm basically stealing from their entire faction. Also because I'm not at all invisible. Everyone can see what I'm doing. So I just be really careful when you're in the middle of looting after a big battle. Make sure that you don't loot someone who's part of the big faction or do it when they can't see you. Not that I would ever encourage thievery from an honest faction uh, at all, but yeah, you should, you totally should because they've got nice shiny swords. Uh, keep in mind though, if you steal from a faction, the traders of that same faction will not be happy if you try to sell them those stolen goods. So that's about it for a basic, basic intro. There's a lot of different ways to start the game, uh, but for me, it really comes down to scavenging, mining raw resources, or trading. The one other option I've really not talked about, because it's not really applicable when you're just by yourself, is you can try to fight animals and kill animals and take their skin. So you, you notice how we wound up coming up to the river raptor fight after it was completed. Well, we can try to hunt river raptors ourselves and gather their leather. I normally do this when I've got a nice sized group of maybe five or six soldiers with me. And they don't even have to be well trained, because as long as you have someone who can pick up uh, you know, the broken bodies after the battle... You can try to fight them. Just be aware that the save button is probably going to be your friend for quite a while. Oh, here's a bunch of escaped servants. They're only carrying clubs, though, so I'm not as impressed. Ooh, they do have cross... 
excuse me, I think got crossbows. I got so excited I got the hiccups. So this group of escaped servants are walking towards this patrol of paladins. So my theory is these two groups are going to fight. Now what I want to do is I see these crossbows on their back, and I think that those crossbows might be worth a good penny. So being the able-bodied and uh, quick-witted scavenger I am, I'm just going to kind of wander over here uh, waiting to see what happens with this group. Unfortunately, it looks like they're going different ways. Now we could try to stand right in the middle of this group to see if they're ever, you know, they might sometimes they get a little bit aggressive with you. They might say, hey, you're not taking me back alive or, hey, we want all your food and your money. So they might aggress on you and you could kind of drag them into the city with you. But it looks like for the moment this fight uh, was averted. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. This is, again, just a real basic overview of what you can do as you start the game. I think I'm going to make a separate video, maybe not for every single type of start, but I might have a video that's focused on the general wanderer start, which would be this video, and then also a trading start and a start where you have a lot of different people, like the entire squad of uh, six. So... I would love your opinions in the in the comment section below. If you have any ideas about uh, future training or tutorial videos, please let me know because I really do enjoy making these and there's so much to learn about Kenshi uh, that I really want to try to pass on as much knowledge as possible. So thank you so much for watching this video and for any feedback you give. I hope to see you again in the next uh, tutorial video and I hope to also have a Let's Play series coming up with a brand new playthrough of Kenshi uh, 1.0 coming up within the next couple of days. I will make this, I uh, will endeavor to make the video that comes up a spoiler free video. So if we s explore something together naturally, that's fine, but I'm not going to try to just tell you where certain things are or tell you about more advanced features of the game because I want us to either explore that together or if you're also playing along while we play, I want you to find those too on your own because it's pretty fun to see. All right, thank you so much for watching, folks. I hope you've had a great time with this video, and uh, I hope to see you again soon.